Do you know in what year they started to develop? Probably the most famous Soviet truck. I'm talking about the Gaz 51. No? Well then everything in order. And yes, we came again to the Museum of Retro Cars VBV, which is near Zelenograd in Yalovo. And how much is there? Of everything? But back to the legend. So, Gaz 51. Designing of a new Soviet truck began in February of 1937. 1937th year for the USSR was the hardest. There were repressions in our country. The Spanish Civil War was in full swing. Nazi Germany was gaining momentum. And in principle, it was already clear to many people where it would lead. But there were positive aspects. Industrialization was in full swing in the country. Plants and factories were being built. Not about hydroelectric power stations. The Soviet Union needed new machinery. The party's task was to build a simple, reliable truck using reliable solutions from the world experience of truck design. That's all. Initially, the project was labeled Gaz 51420. It was headed by Alexander Dmitrievich Prosverin. His team included now legendary engineers and designers, Libgard, Krieger, Borisov, Koskin. The road tests were started in May of 1941st year, and in summer the novelty was shown to the public at the All-Union Agricultural Exhibition. In 1941st year began preparations for serial production of cars. And then the great patriotic war began, and work on the creation of a new car stopped. Many units and assemblies that did not go into serial production of the car were actively used on other equipment during the war. And as soon as the Second World War ended, literally the next year, in 1946th year, Gaz 51 went into production. It is also worth adding that from 1943 at the Gorky automobile plant, testing resumed. Prototypes were built. Even on Red Square in 1945 year, Stalin was shown. The leader was satisfied. Later, Prosvirin was awarded the Stalin Prize of the Second Degree. I know you're going to start writing, I look like an American, I copied everything, yes and no. First of all, America dictated fashion. Secondly, the USSR and the USA actively cooperated in those years. And thirdly, appearance. Prototypes were sometimes fitted with Studiwecker cabins. So, so they stylized it. And the war years showed where to go further, and in fact, only the name was left from the pre-war Gaz 51. Everything else was rethought and redesigned anew. Although what cannot be redesigned even today, it is the basis of all small serious trucks. I'm talking about the frame, and if you think it's just two channels with lintels, no. It's quite complex. The thickest part is in the middle and it tapers at the ends. Plus, the frame has a slight curve at the front to lower the height of the car. Everything is riveted to the frame and so are the lintels. The rivets allow the frame, the frame to breathe, to be alive. The frame sits on axles. All, of course, are leaf springs. Again, there was no alternative and it was not necessary. The front axle was a forged beam of double tail section. There are longitudinal semi-elliptic leaf springs with swinging rear earrings. There are double-acting hydraulic lever shock absorbers. That's ideal. We've got an early Gazi, that's what makes it interesting. You see, it says Molotov Motor Works. That's the name it had until... 56th year. The engine. Nobody even hid the fact that this is a relative of the Dodge DV. But as they say, there is a nuance, a very serious one. It is not a license, but rather an example of industrial espionage of the NKVD of the USSR. How the documentation got to us, there are many legends. But the American motor had to be finalized and seriously. First, the dimensions were converted from inches to the metric system. As a result, the displacement was slightly reduced, from 356 to 348 liters. What else isn't like the Yankee? A floating oil pan was developed, Dodge didn't have one. And it's got a pinion camshaft. That one has a chain, so where's the copying? 
The engine specs are now as follows. Maximum power is 70 horsepower at 2800 RPM. Maximum torque is 201 Newton meters at 1500 RPM. And yes, it's a six cylinder. And if you take two pots out of it, you get a Gaz M20 Victory engine. Plus it's got shutters and we'll be closing them soon. You could also warm up the engine with a blowtorch. Such a preheater. Also a first for the USSR. Well, for an automobile, I mean. The head of the block is made of aluminum. Now the rear axle. It's a leaf spring. There are no shock absorbers with springs. The main gear is spiral bevel. With a pair of conical wheels with spiral teeth. The gear ratio is 667. Gaz 51 was equipped with discs from ZIS-5. Double-ended. Well, but in life more often from the 53rd. The spare tire hangs under the platform on a holder with a folding bracket on the right frame spar behind the cab. Cargo platform, that's the right way, but more familiar is this, body. But as they say, there is a nuance. The body of the truck consists of a cabin and a cargo platform. But who cares? It's made entirely, practically, made of wood. The height of the board is either 540 millimeters or 605. The length is just over 3 meters. And the width on the inside is 1,990 millimeters. And now the most important thing for the truck. The lawn could carry 2.5 tons of cargo. That's according to the data sheet. Even the passport data sentenced the legendary truck to retirement. But all you've heard is that it mattered to a great country, but specifically for the man. The Gaz 51 was really comfortable. The country cared about people. The cabin, luxury. Well, let it be a luxury from the 40s. Compared to the Gaz MM and the ZIS-5, it's a Rolls-Royce. All metal with wooden elements in the construction. By the way, over the years, the wood from the cabin disappeared, as the car was constantly improved. It's got full upholstered seats. Not yet seats, but not sofas. Although the cabin is designed for two, but three people could fit with pleasure. You see the tank under the body? No, you don't. It'll be there later. And now the tank is located under the seat. That's where the battery and all sorts of stuff. Stuff. Do you know why the neck is so wide? It's so you can use a bucket, so you can pour it out of a bucket. It's a little tight for me. But all in all, it's pretty good. It's soft on the butt, what else? By the way, the early dashboards reminded me very much of the Chevrolet ones, only the letters were ours orthodox. Well, water, temperature, oil, like here. But more interesting. Again, the windows open. The windows open. Well, they don't open here, they have anti-theft devices. Homemade. There are wipers, by the way, for two windows. Pneumatic. The windows open separately. The air conditioning is analog. There's a glove compartment. And a thing called a trump card. It used to be here. Well, let's put it away so we don't lose it. It's a sunshade. Sun visor. Engine starts with the key and your foot. There's a rod that presses right on the Bendix. Six pots is a lot. And if you think 70 horses isn't enough, you're wrong. These are not the horses of today. These are horses that are strong and just pull. They don't need to push. They don't know how to do that. Top speed is 70 kilometers an hour. I'm a little low on the window, so I'm going to press down against the steering wheel. Oh, gearbox. Double clutch. The engine, you've got to feel the car, and that's something... You don't always get that. But it's nothing. Because the cabin is warm. Because there is a heater.
Gas 51 was a breakthrough in our domestic automobile construction, maybe a little delayed in coming out, for objective reasons. During the years of production from 1,946 to 1,975 years were built 3,500,000 Gas 51 and Gas 51 1A. The car was produced not only at Gas, but it was also assembled, say, in Odessa and Irkutsk. By the way, the Gas 51 engine was produced as far back as 1,989, but its production was mastered in the 40s. Gulki with a heavy footstep, own weight is more than 2 tons, GVW of over 5 tons. There was an innovation here, hydraulic brakes, their drum brakes, brakes, brakes. Gas 51 was very reliable in operation, easy to repair, and most importantly, the car was constantly improved. They increased the period of inter-service overhaul. Many new solutions applied on the gas were reflected in other models of the Soviet automobile industry. There are more than 30 modifications of the lawn, including all-wheel drive versions. The car was produced under license in Poland, Lublin 51, in North Korea, Senri 58, at the Tashon automobile plant, and of course, China. Great things are done by great people. It's statesmen, not businessmen, who do great things for the country. Are you spilling your guts again? All right, Gas 51, a warm car from my childhood. Let's call it a day. I mean, not the hunt is over, the hunt continues.